Welcome to Nursing Survival. I'm Nurse Camille. Today we're going to be discussing ALS. Find me at nursingsurvival.com for the study guide that goes along with this podcast. Today we'll be discussing the neuromuscular disease in myotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. It's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It is a progressive disease that affects the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. The motor neurons degenerate or die. With the loss of motor neurons, the patient will lose their ability to speak, eat, move, and even breathe. Motor neurons innervate muscles and contribute to muscle tone, muscle contraction, and relaxation. They are directly linked to body movement. ALS normally has abnormalities in the upper and lower motor neurons, but the degree is unique to each patient. Upper motor neurons originate in the brain, and lower motor neurons originate in the spinal cord. Upper motor neurons are found in the cerebral cortex and the brain stem. They transmit information to the lower motor neurons and are the main source of voluntary movement. Lower motor neurons innervate the skeletal muscles. They are the link between the upper motor neurons and the muscles. As I said, ALS is progressive, meaning that it will continue to advance. The typical patient is diagnosed between 40 and 70 years old. They normally die within two to six years of diagnosis. The cause of ALS is unknown. There is a link to heredity in some cases. It could be environmental exposures, such as tobacco smoke, viral infections, and toxins. It is possible that exposures cause an autoimmune reaction in which the body attacks itself. Signs and symptoms of ALS vary from person to person. It may depend on which part of the motor neurons are affected. Primary lateral sclerosis is a form of ALS that affects the upper motor neurons. Symptoms of PLS include severe stiffness or spasticity, clonus, which is involuntary contraction and relaxation of the muscles. They may have impaired speech and swallowing, loss of fine motor movement, as well as altered ability to walk. Progressive muscular atrophy, or PMA, affects the lower motor neurons. The patient may have weakness, decreased motor reflexes, and atrophy, or loss of muscle bulk. Signs and symptoms often associated with ALS include fatigue, muscle weakness, cramps, fasciculation or twitching, loss of coordinated movement, muscle atrophy, which is loss of muscle mass, spasticity is tight, stiff muscles, overreactive muscle reflexes, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, dysarthria is difficulty with the articulation of words, dysphagia is impaired swallowing, ALS can lead to paralysis. The patient's personality may also be affected. They may have inappropriate or uncharacteristic emotional displays. They may suddenly start eating only one type of food or have OCD tendencies. They may have difficulty concentrating or saying what they mean. ALS is difficult to diagnose. Symptoms can start out mild and vague. Several procedures may be performed in order to diagnose it. An electromyogram, or EMG, measures how well the muscles in the body respond to nerve signals from the brain. The electrical activity of the muscles when they are contracting and relaxing is measured. Often an EMG is done with a nerve conduction study, or NCS. It measures how fast and strong the electrical activity is in the nerves. Nursing considerations for an EMG and NCS include explaining the procedures to the patient. For an EMG, electrodes are placed on the skin and needles are inserted into select muscles. The patient contracts and relaxes the muscles. A NCS is not as uncomfortable as an EMG. Electrodes are placed on the skin and a mild electrical impulse is applied. The test usually takes about one hour. Other nursing considerations include making sure the patient has consent and review the patient's allergies. Preparation for the test includes restricting stimulants such as coffee, cigarettes, or tea two to three hours before the test. The patient should be instructed not to wear lotion or moisturizers. Review the patient's home medications. Medications that may interfere with the results include cholinergics, anticholinergics, anticoagulants, and skeletal muscle relaxants. After the procedure, tell the patient to monitor for signs of infection at the needle sites, as well as numbness or difficulty moving the extremities. They may be sore for several days afterwards. If the patient has spontaneous electrical activity when the muscles are at rest, they may have ALS. 
Other diagnostic procedures include an MRI, CT scan, and x-rays. They may help to rule out other diseases and disorders. Often ALS is diagnosed by ruling out other conditions. Labs include a creatinine kinase, which is an enzyme released when the muscles are injured or die. Normal range for men is 42 to 226, and women it is 38 to 176. High levels would indicate muscle disease or damage. An autoimmune antibody test and a lumbar puncture may be done to help rule out other conditions. The patient may be tested for heavy metal exposure. Genetic testing may be done. Heredity ALS is rare, but it does occur. There are many complications associated with ALS. Dysphagia is difficulty swallowing. The patient may have excessive saliva, impaired respirations that are often restrictive rather than obstructive. Atelectasis is a partial or complete collapse of a lung or part of a lobe. Impaired airway clearance. Frequent respiratory infections, impaired communication, including dysarthria, which is difficulty speaking. The patient may have slurred or slow speech. They may also have impaired mobility of the extremities, resulting in an inability to write. Deep vein thrombosis, DVT, or a pulmonary embolism, PE, may result. The patient may suffer from depression. Constipation and poor nutrition are often seen with ALS. They may also have delayed wound healing. Pseudobulbar effect is inappropriate laughing or crying. The patient is displaying emotions that are not the same as what they are feeling. With ALS, the neuro network that controls motor output of emotions is disturbed. There is no cure for ALS. The disease is progressive and eventually the patient will die from complications related to ALS. Treatment is geared towards managing symptoms and maximizing body functions. Chest physiotherapy is percussion or clapping over the patient's back and chest to help move mucus. This may improve the patient's respiratory effort. They may need oxygen therapy. Medications to help manage symptoms of ALS include baclofen, which is a muscle relaxer. It can help treat muscle spasticity. Dantrolene sodium is also a muscle relaxant. It helps with spasticity as well as cramps and spasms. Diazepam may be used to help treat anxiety, pain, and muscle spasms. Teglutic and Relutec slow the progression of ALS. They inhibit glutamate release. Nutexta is used to treat pseudobulbar effect. As the disease progresses, the patient will have difficulty feeding themselves and eventually swallowing. A feeding tube, such as a peg tube, may be placed to help the patient receive nutrition. The patient will also lose the ability to breathe during the later stages, so they might have to be mechanically ventilated. Nursing considerations for caring for a patient with ALS include assessing the patient's motor strength, spasticity, and contractures. Also assess their skin. With impaired mobility, they are at a higher risk for skin breakdown. You may also want to assess the patient's ability to perform ADLs as well as their mobility level. Remember that the patient's respiratory system may become affected. Monitor the rate and O2 saturations. Have oxygen ready. Encourage the patient to use the incentive spirometer. If they become short of breath, elevate the head of the bed. Elevating the head of the bed can also help reduce the risk of aspiration. The patient may need a swallowing evaluation. You may also encourage them to tuck their chin to their chest when eating. Inform them to avoid distractions while eating and encourage small, frequent meals. Excessive saliva may be due to the impaired ability to swallow. Have suction at the bedside. The patient's disease will continue to progress and they will eventually die. They should consider a living will or an advanced directive. Keep in mind that the patient's cognitive function is not affected, just their motor. Talk to them directly and give them plenty of time to respond. Communication techniques that may help include a whiteboard or sign language. Encourage the patient to do as much self-care as they can and to stay active. They may need braces or splints if they develop contractures. Remember that the patient may need advanced care as their disease progresses. This includes peg tubes or perhaps mechanical ventilation. The caregiver will be forced to take on more and more care of the patient. This can cause a lot of strain. They may need community resources. Patient education includes telling them how important exercise is. Low-impact aerobic exercises such as walking, swimming, or biking would be beneficial. 
They should have range of motion on the extremities, especially as they lose the ability to move. With the loss of mobility, they are also at a risk for bed sores and skin breakdown. Inform them of the importance to reposition every two hours and to stay off bony prominences. Instruct the patient and the caregivers that activities of daily living are vital for the patient to do themselves. This helps improve their muscle strength, sense of independence, as well as emotional well-being. Good nutrition is critical for the patient. Small, frequent, high-calorie meals, along with adequate fluid intake, should be incorporated into the patient's stay. Inform the patient that they may have constipation and should consider stool softeners. Instruct the patient to cough and deep breathe to help clear mucus and to breathe easier. They should report when they're feeling shortness of breath. Vital signs such as blood pressure, heart rate, and respirations should be monitored regularly. Thank you for listening to this episode of Nursing Survival. Find me at nursingsurvival.com for more study guides. I love to hear from you. Shoot me an email with any topics you'd like to hear. Thank you.